out of the fog and out of the night and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. The Adventures of Bulldog Drummond, starring Ned Weaver, amateur detective, soldier of fortune, champion of lost causes. Bulldog Drummond of screen and radio fame comes to you every week at this same time with more of his baffling and intriguing mystery. These exciting detective stories are brought to you by the makers of Tums, Tums for the Tummy, and Nature's Remedy, NR Tablet. Question. Uh-oh, ovary? Take Tums, the one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. T-U-M-S, Tums. Bulldog Drummond, to tell you about his newest adventure. Civilizations change, perhaps, but the fundamental patterns remain. The patterns of life and death, and the games of life and death. In Rome, it was gladiators, armed with net and spear, who fought in the arena until one or the other died. In medieval times, there were knights with lance on sword, who fought on horseback. Today... We have our counterpart of those games of death, prize fighting. Two men in a roped square, but the fight is usually not to the death, only until one man has rendered another helpless. But sometimes the game has the older and deadlier issue, and a man dies in front of screaming thousands. Denny and I had often been spectators at prize fights, but on one occasion we became much more than spectators. We became actors in the drama. It all began late one evening with Denny and me at home. Uh, oh. Denny. Uh, yes, sir? What on earth are you doing? Uh, reading, sir. Is that why you're trying to stand on your head? Uh, well, sir, it's a rather difficult book to understand. Oh? Uh, frankly, I haven't been able to follow it with what I already have in my head, so I thought if I could get more blood into it... Denny, I... you'll get apoplexy. Oh, you think so? Oh, then perhaps I'd better try another book, uh, an easier one. I Try uh... answering the door, Denny anyone interesting, you may not have to read at all. Oh, I don't mind reading, sir. It's figuring out what it means that I... Denny. Uh, yes, I'll get it, sir. Maybe someone asking me to subscribe to the Book of the Year Club, sir. A book of the Month, Denny. Uh, read a book every month? So that's fantastic, sir. I... Yes? Who... Come on, quick, close the door. Uh, right. Close it, I tell you. Uh, oh, of course, sir. The window. Get the shade down. Uh, yes, right away. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. It's a little more confined, perhaps, but... Uh... My name is Drummond. Uh, Vincent. Joe Vincent. How do you do, Mr. Vincent? So far, not too bad. After that, who can tell? I'm not quite sure I understand. Oh, he must be an author. I got a feeling I'm on a spot, Captain Drummond. That's why I came here. Go on. You see, I got a boy. Tarzan. Tarzan? Yeah. One of the lousiest middleweights that ever fouled up a ring. Oh, I see. You're a prize fight manager. Mm -hmm. And your fighter's name is Tarzan. Yeah. And he's not very good. And that's what I said. Well, there's nothing I can do about his ability or lack of it. Then maybe you could explain to me why the big gamblers are putting all their dough on my boy. He's fighting someone? Tomorrow night at the Acme Arena. He's meeting Asawi Bill. An Indian? Strictly from Brooklyn. But a good box fighter. And despite that, the gamblers are betting on Tarzan. That's what's got me scared. I can't figure it. I'm betting on Asawi Bill myself. Oh, is that quite loyal? It's practical, Captain Drummond. Otherwise, me and Tarzan wouldn't eat. I see. Uh, you don't see the half of it, Captain Drummond. On account of you don't know Mr. Burton. Uh, no, I don't. Who is he? Mr. Burton is a nice, quiet guy who don't look like he'd harm a fly. And? He wouldn't harm a fly. Well? But I ain't no fly. Mr. Burton is head of this here gambling outfit I'm telling you about. They're all planting their dough on Tarzan. Now, supposing Tarzan don't win tomorrow night, then they are likely to be planting Tarzan, not to mention me. Yes, but surely Burton wouldn't blame you or your fighter if he lost fairly. Mr. Burton ain't the type guy interested in what's fair. He likes to win bets. So do the boys he bosses, see? Yes, well, I appreciate your dilemma, but I can't see that there's anything for me to do. You could be interested. Perhaps, but... And uh, I could kind of spread it around that you was interested in, in my health and Tarzan's. I'm not a physician. If Mr. Burton gets mad, me and Tarzan wouldn't need no physician. We'd be using the same undertaker. Well, suppose we say that um, Denny and I are interested in the fight. Here's a couple of tickets. Thank you. 
We'll be at the fight. Swell. I'm not sure how much of a protection that'll be for you. I ain't either, Captain Jarman, but it'll be something. And even if I get killed... Uh, yes? I'll still appreciate it. Yeah, quite a crowd, sir. Yes, Jenny. I hardly think... Oh, um, Carson's dressing room should be right down this corridor here. Uh, we're going to visit him before the fight? Vincent asked me to drop in. Oh, and cheer Tarzan up. Well, from the newspaper photographs I've seen of Tarzan, I doubt it. I doubt whether Tarzan has any emotions. Oh, well, I don't know, sir. He looks almost human. Almost. Oh, this listen. is the door. Quiet, the transom's open. Tarzan, don't be no jerk. Mr. Vincent. Yes. We got all our dough riding on a sorry bill. Your wife is thinking. With what? What's going to happen to my career if I keep on getting laid in the rising all the time? You should have thunk of that before giving up your truck. Joe. I the we Bill's been making a question, see? About you personal or professional? About I think, see. But when I get in that ring tonight, I'm going to knock his ears off. Tarzan, Tarzan, listen to me. First, if you hit him, he's going to get mad at you, and maybe he'll kill you. Second, if there is a miracle and you lay him away, we lose all our dough. Tarzan, we can't take no chance. you got to make sure and dive for him. I don't dive tonight. Don't answer me too quick. Think, think, will you? You know what's happening for the price of steak, don't you? That's not quite cricket, Mr. Vincent's suggestion, is it? Not only that, Denny, it's dangerous as well. The gambling ring is betting on Tarzan, and if he should spill the fight too obviously, well, that must be the end of the preliminary bout. We may as well go to our seats. And not visit with Tarzan? No, no, we'll let him think. I don't envy him. He's in a rather difficult spot. If the star we build doesn't kill him inside the ring, Mr. Burton is likely to kill him outside. Yeah, splendid seats we have, sir. Ringside, Denny? Yes, quite. Carson looks a little nervous. And not half as nervous as Vincent, sir. No, whereas the star we build... A revolting specimen, sir. Uh, quite muscular, however. Quite. Right. The fight should start at any moment now. The men have received their instructions from the referee, and they're returning to their corners. Yeah, clever of them to remember, considering their lack of brow. They've turned now. Seconds are out of the ring. Perfect. Imagine. The Tarson seems to think he's in a race. Look at him running. The crowd doesn't like it either. Of course, that may be Tarzan's strategy. But he never win the fight running away. He may not win the fight, Denny, but he may save his life. Oh, look. What do we do? Just just it. Again. And again. Good heavens, sir. Tarzan is being mangled. Yes, yes. To keep on running. Why doesn't he fight back? Now, don't look now, sir. The Tarzan just threw a punch at our to him. Uh, a lot of people left, but good heavens, sir. He's not possibly build down. With what, Denny? That blow scarcely reached us, are we? With weak. I wonder... Tarzan's knocked him out, sir, apparently. Come along, Denny. I want a word with Vincent. But he's in the ring with Tarzan. Yes, yes, I know. Here we are. Oh, uh, Vincent. Oh, yeah, yeah, gentlemen. Hey, did you see what I seen? What did you see? Tarzan putting a slug on the slowly, knocking him out. I saw that, but I'm not sure I believe it. Confidential, neither do I. Hey, Tarzan. Uh, hey, I tell hey, hey, I knocked him out. Maybe I can't fight fight for with one punch, I laid him on a canvas. He ain't even got up yet. So I see. I think I'd better take a look. Well, Sowie's still unconscious, isn't he? Yes, Denny. I'm likely to remain so. Uh, you mean uh, for a long time? I mean forever. Sowie Bill is dead. story continues in just a moment, but first... You know, Ken, the wife's making jelly. Say, that's good. But I sample every glass full. Say, that's bad. But then I take Tums. Say, that's good. Yes, when your eyes are bigger than your stomach, taking Tums is good because acid indigestion is bad. You see, Tums are the modern way for relief from acid distress. Tums are fast, Tums are convenient, Tums are effective. Fast, because Tums dissolve in the mouth almost instantly, like candy mint. Get after acid upset in a matter of seconds. Convenient, because Tums need no mixing, no stirring, no water at all. Effective, because Tums are a carminative antacid. And only a carminative antacid can both soothe and dispel acid distress. And never a chance of acid rebound with Tums ever. Yes, Tums are fast, Tums are convenient, Tums are dependable. So do as millions do. Next time you pick up your change, pick up a roll of Tums. 
Your druggist keeps them handy because so many of his customers reach for them. Tums for the tummy. Still only ten cents. The one word suggestion for acid indigestion. T U M S. Tums. Now back to the case of the fatal right. Captain Drummond and Denny had attended the prize fight between Tarzan and Asawi Bill, a fight in which Asawi Bill was the favorite. But Tarzan won the fight. He knocked Asawi Bill out. And when Drummond, climbing into the ring, took one good look at Asawi, he remarked to Denny, He's dead, Denny. Dead, dead, sir? Hey, what's going on? Why don't Asawi get up? He can't get up, Tarzan. He's dead. He... Hey, you mean on a kind of fight knocked him out? I don't even know my own strength. I'm afraid that's not it, Tarzan. Sawi Bill didn't die as the result of a blow. Then what was it? Take a deep breath, Tarzan. I can take it straight. I... Hey, you mean that funny smell? Yes. My good heavens, sir. It's the odor of almonds. That's right, Denny. The odor of almonds. Almonds is not true, but it's also the odor of hydrocyanic acid. Well, that's cyanide. It's poison. Yeah, but... Why it is not we'd be drinking that kind of stuff. He, he didn't drink it. You notice the smudge around his nose and mouth where you hit him? I mean, well, like it was dusty. Yes. And that dust, unless I'm grossly mistaken, is powdered hydrocyanic acid. The Sawi must have inhaled enough of it to kill him. Can you imagine that? But Captain Drummond, how did the powder get on his face? Tarzan's boxing gloves, Denny. Uh, I want Vincent. Where's Joe? Uh, I noticed him leave rather hurriedly a few minutes ago. He, he took a powder. Tarzan. I'm afraid the police are going to be more interested in the powder Asawi Bill took. And that means interested in you. Poor Tarzan. He looked so pathetic when they arrested him. On the evidence the police had, there was no alternative for them. But you don't think he's guilty, do you? What makes you think that, Denny? Well, sir, we wouldn't have dashed out and taken this taxi if we did, would we? Right, Denny. No, I'm not at all sure of Tarzan's guilt. But what does the elite pool room have to do with it? Our destination? Burton's gambling pays off there. Oh, I see. I'm curious about the winners, the people who bet on Tarzan. Because they're the people who had a motive for wanting a Sawi to die. Some of them, most of them, will turn out to be people who like to bet on the outsider. But one of them, Denny, will be a murderer. Uh, rather an elegant place, sir, this pool room. Large. I wonder... Oh, yes, yes, it would be down this end. But there are no tables here. No tables, but an office. Someone just came out, counting money. Lucky fellow, he must have won. No one we know, however... However, if we wait beside here... Captain Drummond. Yes, I see. Vincent. But he can't have won. He told us he'd bet on a salary. So he did. Hello, Vincent. What the... Oh, oh. Captain Drummond. Yes. Kind of a surprise seeing you here. I might say the same. Hey, you mean on a kind of... Well, Mr. Burton ain't mad at me. He's causing one. True, but what were you doing with the money I saw in your hand? Oh, uh... Because if you bet on a salary, you'd have lost. So I didn't bet on a salary. So I bet on Tarzan. So what? The Sawi was murdered. Had you bet on him, you'd have been in the clear. I'm in the clear anyway. You have a motive. Look, German, maybe I got a motive. But I didn't rub no cyanide on the Sawi smeller, see? You wouldn't have had to. All you would have had to do was rub the powder on Tarzan's club. Did he say I'd done it? No, but perhaps he didn't realize it. That ain't no proof of nothing. I'm in the clear, see? Nevertheless. Maybe he got a warrant to hold me, huh? Vincent, if I was sure that you... I wouldn't need a warrant. Oh, yeah, that's only your opinion, see, and I don't have to take nothing from nobody, see? Why are you shouting? Fear? Conscience? Never mind, I guess... Can I be of any help? Mr. Boyton. Good evening, Vincent. And, uh... uh Denny there. I'm Captain Drummond. Delighted. You were saying, Vincent... I was saying I'm getting out of here. Quick. Rather upset, poor chap. I've seen you before, Mr. Burton. Indeed. Yes, you were a Sawi Bill's second tonight at the fight. True. It amuses me on occasion to act as handler. But you didn't bet on it. You're well informed. Vincent. Vincent. Talk it is. Not quite enough, however. How does it happen, Mr. Burton, that you bet on a fighter not your own? Shall we call it whimsy? 
As Darwey Bill was the better fighter, that made the odds attractive. It also made Vincent's life valueless if Tarzan lost. True. But Tarzan won. Vincent delivered. Vincent, as you say, delivered. Splendid. Denny can testify to your statement. Indeed. Where? At the murder trial. Oh. Tarzan. Perhaps. Perhaps Vincent. Hmm. Perhaps we can discuss this further. I intend to. But not with you. With Vincent. I could make it more interesting financially. I happen to be interested in justice. Stuffy on your part, isn't it? Perhaps. Still, that stuffiness may keep one man out of the electric chair. In Tarzan's case, a debatable game for society. And put another man in it. No answer. Uh, this is the button for Vincent's apartment, isn't it? It is. But Mr. Vincent is evidently not at home. Uh, do you think he's uh, <laughs> taking it on the lamb, sir? I doubt it, Denny. There was no evidence against him. Oh, he's in after all. Apartment 1B should be right along here. I wonder why he hesitated so long about answering. Perhaps he was in his bath, or... Here we are, 1B. Now to... <laughs> Denny. Denny, that gun was fired inside the apartment. The door. Uh, but no, we're not going in. Of course we are. Whoever was being shot at, it wasn't us. Yeah. Oh, Captain Drummond. Uh, there, there, behind the desk. Yes, Vincent. So look, he, he put a bullet in his brain, sir. So it would seem. Revolver in his right hand. Careful, Denny, I'll take it. Now then, under this lamp. Strong enough light, I should think, if I can get the right angle. Yes. Notice the fingerprints, Denny? Oh, yes, sir. One set clearly marked. Yes. And certainly Vincent. Therefore? Therefore, the back entrance. Off the kitchen, probably. Oh, good heavens, sir. How could you deduce a back entrance from his fingerprints? Well, Denny, his fingerprints, plus the fact that we got in here, proves that he was murdered. Oh, well, we knew that all along. A uh, uh, murder? But he committed suicide. What we were supposed to think, Denny. That he killed us, are we, and then committed suicide when he thought we were catching up with him. But, Denny, if he were about to kill himself, why should he have answered the doorbell? Uh, oh, oh. Uh. Uh, but why did he kill her? To make sure someone would hear the shot and find the still warm body, thereby confirming a suicide theory. But the clear fingerprints ruin that, Denny. A suicide never just grasps the gun and fires. He can't. He has to fumble with it, to aim it properly, to nerve himself to the act. Therefore, his fingerprints, although identifiable, would always be smudged. Now, what happened here, evidently, was that someone shot Vincent wiped his own prints clean, and then pressed the gun into Vincent's hand. A nasty bit of work, sir. Well, Vincent's dishonesty, his willingness to win money by deceit, and throwing fights was rather nasty, too. Turnabout, I suppose, is fair play. Hello. Good heavens, Denny. Did you hear what I said? Oh, quite, sir. I had my hearing tested only last week, and the doctor said now, that never I... mind what the doctor said. Denny, I have just discovered who killed Asawi Bill. It wasn't Vincent? Obviously not. It was the same person who killed Vincent. Oh? But I rather doubt whether we'll be able to prove Vincent's murder. Our murder unquestionably relied on an unshakable alibi in this instance. In the murder of Asawi, however, he relied on an undetectable method. Uh, which you detected, sir. Unconsciously, Denny. And something I said without thinking. Uh, you don't mind repeating what it was? Certainly not. The key sentence was, turn about is fair play. Yes, so it is. I mean, uh, oh, really, sir? Yes, Denny, yes. Something in that sentence is going to deliver a murderer to justice. Splendid, sir. Because, you see, everyone thinks that the only people who could have put the cyanide powder on Tarzan's gloves were either Tarzan himself or Vincent. Isn't that true? No. Because, oddly enough, the person who put the cyanide on Tarzan's gloves was a corpse. the exciting climax of our story in just a moment. They're preparing for a free Halloween party over at the King's house, and everybody's having fun except Charlie. Yeah, you can talk, all right. You don't have acid indigestion like I do. Feels like my insides are in more of a turmoil than that pumpkin's over there. Well, Tums can help you there. <laughs> Tums, you say? Yes, Tums. The one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. When acid indigestion has you feeling punk as a pumpkin, Tums can help you feel candle bright and energetic. 
Chums are fat because they melt in the mouth like candy mint. Chums start after that upset, ready to neutralize excess acidity in jig time. No mixing, no stirring, no waiting. You don't even need water. Yes, in a matter of seconds, chum soothes heartburn, calms those jitters, starts you on the road toward feeling yourself again. Chums, you know, are a carminative antacid. And a carminative antacid both soothes and dispels the upset. Still only ten cents a roll, all drugget. Chums for the tummy. The one-word suggestion for acid indigestion. T-U-M-S, Tums. One death followed by another. A sorry bill killed in the ring. Joe Vincent apparently shot by his own hand. But Drummond knows that Vincent was murdered. And that the man who murdered him is the same man who killed a sorry bill. But now on their way to the pool room, Denny asks Captain Drummond. But Captain Drummond, did you say a corpse put the cyanide powder on cars in his gloves? Why are we returning to the elite pool room? They don't keep corpses there. Uh, no, Denny. Besides, sir, you can't arrest a corpse for murder. True. But then the corpse wasn't guilty. Oh, that's nice, sir. Uh, uh, oh, it wasn't? It wasn't. Hmm. Uh, are the pool room still open? It would have to be. Hmm. Not many people here. As a matter of fact, only... Oh, yes, Mr. Burton and... And a couple of witnesses. I beg your pardon. Never mind, Eddie. Good evening, Mr. Burton. Oh, good evening. Just a moment till I finish this. In the side pocket. Now then, Captain. Uh, this should be rather private. Oh, well, my office, then. Gentlemen, will you excuse me? This way, if you please. Been playing long? All evening. Of course. Those friends of yours would testify to that, wouldn't they? Necessary. Go right in. Thank you. I rather think it's going to be necessary. Indeed. The police will want to know where you were at the time Mr. Vincent died. None. Mr. Vincent committed suicide. And you knew that? How? Mm. I'm afraid, Captain Drummond, that our conversation is at an end. Not quite. Murder is an ugly word, Mr. Burton. It's an even uglier deed. Mr. Vincent was not murdered. I'm not talking about him. Arthur Wee Bill. Arthur Wee Bill. Well, I admit I earned quite a tidy sum when he lost his fight. I'll even admit that it supplies me with a pleasant motive for his murder. But Captain Drummond, the hydrocyanic acid powder was on Tarzan's gloves. I was never near those gloves. That can be proved. Of course it can. But that is not an alibi. Seems like a wonderful one to me. Yes, so long as we don't mention the old saying, turn about a fair play. Let's not bother with old saying. Oh, but we must. Since that particular one is going to convict you of murder, Mr. Burton. I fail to see how. Everyone has assumed that because there was cyanide powder on Arthur Wee Bill's mouth and nose, the powder got there from Tarzan's gloves. But, Mr. Burton, remembering the turnabout saying, we come to another possibility. The powder got onto Tarzan's gloves because it was already on Arthur Wee Bill's face. And when you wiped his face between the third and fourth rounds, you smeared the powder on it. A theory. The towel you used. I dumped it in. All right, Drummond, you called it. Good. And now, if you'll permit, I'll call the police. I... Oh, dear. That's a revolver you're pointing at me. Your perceptions do you credit. I'm rather surprised, Drummond, about one thing. Knowing as you did that I am a murderer. Paraphrase another old saying. Why did you walk into my office? I needed your confession. But surely you must have realized that I would take steps. But not very many. Listen. Hear nothing? Precisely. Why not? Weren't there two of your thugs out there? Not to mention Denny. They... They're not talking or playing at the moment. I'm sure they're not. You see, Denny had casually picked up a billiard cue when I walked in here with you. I rather suspect he used it on your friend. Forget me. Uh, take a look. Oh, no, no. I prefer to play safe. There's another way out of this office. I know there is. Hmm? Because someone is coming into the office at this very moment through that entrance. Well, it's impossible. I don't... You shouldn't have looked. Let's go. I think not. Drop that gun. Please. Excuse me, but your chin is showing. Oh. Jenny? Yes, sir? You can come in now. Oh, well, here I am, sir. Oh, dear. Is that Mr. Burton on the floor? Yes. He turned his head at the wrong moment. <laughs> what a coincidence. Mr. Burton's two friends are also lying down. The cue, Denny? I'm afraid so, sir. Splendid work. 
Thank you, sir. But I had to swing rather hard. You know, I have a feeling that the queue will never be the same. Well, if it comes to that, once the police arrive, I rather suspect that the Burton and his associates will never be the same either. <laughs> Bulldog Drummond will be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. But first, the adventures of Bulldog Drummond are brought to you every week at this time by Tums and Nature's Remedy, NR tablet. If you feel all in when you should feel all right, if nagging sick headaches, fatigue, nervousness have you feeling down at the mouth, that may be Nature's way of saying you need a laxative. Try Nature's Remedy, NR tablet, a dependable laxative. Remember these four important guesses about Nature's Remedy. All vegetable? Yes. Time-tested? Yes. Dependable? Yes. Economical? Yes. 25 tablets, only 25 cents. Caution take only as directed. N.R. Nature's Remedy. N.R. tonight, tomorrow, all right. Bulldog Drummond to tell us about next week's story. In these critical times of meat shortage, a cattle thief is more reprehensible than ever. Denny and I come up against the old western rustling problem, but more difficult to solve and more heinous because of modern methods employed. Slaughtering meat is one thing and saves human lives, but slaughtering humans is a different story. A story I call Thunder on the Rain. Be sure to listen, won't you? And so into the night walks Bulldog Drummond, seeking new adventure and excitement. Join us next week at the same time when we will bring you Bulldog Drummond, starring Ned Weaver, and another thrilling story. Mutual's Mystery Hour continues immediately after station identification with the case book of Gregory Hood. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.